Okay guys, let's continue. Uh, the next one will be doing more questions on inequality. Okay, so let's try this question. The question says that x is actually more than negative 5 but lesser than 3 and y is actually more than negative 2 but lesser than 5. Okay, so for this one, the technique is actually to write out the least, the minimum value, the maximum value, and if 0 is applicable inside the range. So, what's the minimum value of x? It's actually what? Negative 5. What's the maximum value? 3. Is 0 inside this range? Yes. Okay, how about y? What's the minimum? The minimum is actually negative 2. What's the maximum? 5. Is 0 inside this range? Yes. Okay, so for this one, find the least possible value of x, y. For this sort of question, what you need to do is actually do a lot of mix and match. Okay, so the least possible value of 5 will be just negative 5 times 5. For this question, it's actually negative 25. Okay, part B. We are supposed to find the greatest possible value of y minus x. y minus x. So it'll be just 5 minus negative 5, which is equals to 10. C. Find the greatest possible value of x squared minus y squared. x squared minus y squared. A x squared minus y, sorry. So it should be x squared minus 5. So it's negative 5, whole thing squared minus negative 2. So answer will be 25. Pardon me. 25 plus 2, which is equal to 27. Okay? Part D. Find the least possible value of y squared minus x. y squared minus x. So y squared minus x will be the least possible value of y squared minus x. So it'll be 0 squared minus 3. Okay, the answer will be negative 3. That's the smallest. The last one. You're supposed to find the least possible value of x over y. x over y. The least possible value of x over y. Least over should be, let me see, should be 3 over negative 2. Equals to negative 1 and a half. Okay, so just do a lot of guess and check. That's the approach for this. So for this one, go ahead and write down the minimum and the maximum and zero is applicable in each of the x and y values. After you do that, then we do a lot of guess and check, mix and match to get the best possible answers. Okay, the next one is actually try it. So we'll go ahead and try the questions yourself. Next one, addition and subtraction of fractions. The idea is actually to do what? They're actually, it's actually a primary school way. You just have to make the same denominator. Make them same denominator. Okay, multiplication of fractions, we're gonna cross cancel. Okay, the next one, division of fractions, we're gonna cross cancel as well. Okay, in which we need to let you to flip fraction okay I think you did it in primary school so it's actually the same thing so let me try some of the questions the first one uh, let me screw it up first the first one negative one whole three fifth plus this okay so the first step for me I'll actually go ahead and simplify the fraction first simplify the not simplify the fraction I'm gonna simplify the signs I'll need to actually go ahead and simplify the sign plus and minus and minus minus so it becomes negative 1 whole 3 fifth minus 2 whole 2 third plus a quarter. Okay, the next step, make them all to the same denom. Try to make them improper first. 8 over 5 minus 8 over 3 plus 1 quarter. Okay, so equals to, you make them all them to the same denominator. You make them to 60 instead. So it's minus... 96 over 60 minus 120 over 60 plus 30 not 30 it should be 15 over 60 so equals to minus this minus is actually negative 216 negative 216 negative 216 plus 15 will be this 201 so it's negative 201 over 60 equals to negative 3 21 over 60 then just reduce to the lowest term negative 3 7 over 20 that's answer okay
Okay, fraction times fraction, same thing. You go and what? You go and do cross cancellation. So for this one, we cancel the seven. One, two, cancel one and five. Okay, so it becomes negative two fifth times. This one becomes negative five over four. Cancel as well. Cancel, cancel, cancel one, cancel two. So it becomes one over two. Negative times negative is positive. Next one, division. Please remember to change. We can't do division of fraction. We have to change to multiplication. To change multiplication, what you need to do is actually go and flip this one. Okay, so it becomes uh, times negative nine over eight times negative sixteen over three. Okay, after that we can do cancellation. One, two, cancel, cancel, cancel. The answer is just what negative times negative is equals negative four. That's the answer. Okay, can same thing. Go and try it. Although calculators can be used in your paper, but all workings must be shown. So you can't just key the whole question into your calculator without showing the working, else you do not get the full credits. Okay, I created some question for you, so please go and try it. Next one, decimals. How am I supposed to find value of a decimal without using calculator? So the first one is pretty simple. I think primary school level, just one point two six a plus three point two six seven. Just add it up, becomes five one three one four. So not four, it should be five. Pardon me. Point four. So five is four point five three five. Next one. 3.478 minus 1.673. This is pretty straightforward. So it's 5, 0, 14, and 2. 1.805. Next one. How to do, do this without this one? If I were you, I take it as a whole number. What number is that? What, is, what number is it? And 0 0.28. Sorry. What number is it? It's actually in 0 0.28. It's actually your 28. So take this as 28 times 126. Okay, so you take 126 times 28. So it comes 8, 4, 0, 2, 0, 1, 2, 5, 2, plus 8, 2, 5, 3. So it equals to 3, 5, 2, 8. But now look at the decimal point. How many decimal points are there? Two decimal places. This one, two decimal places. So in total, there are four decimal places. So now you're doing to pay back. One, two, three, four. So the answer will be 0 0.3528. That's the answer. Okay, next one. What you need to do here is actually try to make the divisor, which is this one, into a whole number. So what can you do to make a whole number? We need to times 100. And then we okay, we put in terms of fraction first. So it becomes 1.485 over 0 0.05. So we times 100. The idea is you actually make the denominator a whole number. So it becomes 1.485 divided by 5. And what you do is actually just use a long division method. Okay, 0 0.2, which is 14, minus, eh, not 14, pardon me, it should be 10. Forty-eight, nine, forty-five, three, five, which is 7. So answer is 0 0.297. Okay, can? So I give you some examples to go try it, try it. Okay, next one is a bit of a structured question. Uh, let's try. Let's read the question. The temperature at the top of the mountain is actually negative 25 degrees Celsius. The temperature at the bottom of the mountain is 15 degrees Celsius. The vertical height of the mountain is 8,000. Find the difference in temperature between the top and the foot of the mountain. So how do you find difference? Difference, what we do is actually take the larger value, the bigger value minus the smaller value. So the bigger value will be 15 minus the smaller value, 25 which is equals to 40. That's the answer. B. If Paul is standing 2,000 meters above the foot of the mountain, what temperature will you experience? So maybe we try to draw a mountain here to illustrate. 
At the top of the mountain is actually negative 25 degrees Celsius. At the bottom, you actually you have experienced 15 degrees Celsius. The height is actually 8,000 meters. We have this guy here, which is Paul, which is standing 2,000 above the foot. So this, let's say we have, a, we have a guy here, Paul. From here to here is actually jumping 2,000 meters. So what temperature is it experiencing? Okay, so the first step, we know that for 8,000 meters, for every 8,000 meters you climb, you have a difference of 40 degrees Celsius. So without you, I go and find 1 meter. Uh, to find meter, so what you do is just take 40, divide by 8,000, which is 0 0.005 degrees Celsius. The change in height is 2,000 meters, so we take 2,000 meters, it's actually equals to 10 degrees Celsius. So means what? For every height of 2,000 meters you ascend, you have an experience of 10 degrees Celsius. So the higher you go, the lesser you feel the colder. So what I do is actually just take 15 minus 10. The answer is just 5 degrees Celsius. That's the answer. Okay? Can? Next one. The temperature of city X is negative 10. The temperature of city X is actually negative 10 degrees Celsius. City Y is actually 32 degrees Celsius. Find a difference between the temperature between X and Y. X and Y. So what I need to do? Difference. We take the biggest minus the smaller. So it's 32 minus bracket negative 10. So answer is 32 minus minus. I hope you guys still remember. Negative negative is what? Positive. Goes to 42. Sorry. Okay, B. If CT X is experienced by green temperature with the average of X and Y, find W. So I have to find average. We take the 32 plus negative 10 and then divide by 2 will do. Okay, 10. So minus and plus will become minus 10 over 2, which is equal to 22 over 2, which is equal to 11 degrees Celsius. Straightforward enough. Okay, 10. So let's go to the next one. Same thing, I actually created two similar questions for you to try. Please pause the video and give it a try. Next one as well. Okay. Ken, I think the last section for today is actually what we do. We call it as approximation and estimation. So what are significant figures? Significant figures. So let's say I give you an example. A value say it's actually 0 0.083271. What's the first significant? Let's talk about significant figure. So significant figure we write as SF. Below dp, we write as dp here. So, where's the first significant figure? will be at 8. If let's say you start with 0, we ignore the 0. The first significant figure will be 8, 2, 7, 1. How about decimal places? It will be here. After decimal places, it will be first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seven. Okay? Ken? So, for this one, so for this one, round following number to one significant figure. To one significant figure. So to one significant figure, what's the answer? The first significant figure is actually what eight. So running off should be not eight. A lot of students write eight, which is wrong. How can a value of eight hundred and twenty three point seven six eight two you round off becomes eight? It doesn't make sense. When you round off means we're trying to round off to a very close value, so the answer should be eight hundred. Next step, round off to two decimal place, two significant figure which has two, the answer will be just eight, two, zero. Okay? Can four significant figure is actually at the seven here. It's actually at seven here. So the answer is just eight two three point eight. That's the answer. Okay? Next one. So for a normal number, just say for example two three five point six one eight. Where's the SF? Where's the significant figure? Significant figure is just the first one. As long if the question doesn't start with zero, then the first significant will be here. Second, third. 4th, 5th, and 6th. Okay? And let's say the decimal point is actually straightforward. It's actually the first digit after the decimal point that will be 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Okay? Can? So next one, round the following numbers to 1 significant figure. So 1 significant figure. So the answer will be, what's the 1 significant figure? Figure is actually at 7. So it will be 0 0.008. Two significant figures actually at six, so zero point zero zero seven seven. 
Next one, 4SF, 1, 2, 3, 4, so it's actually at the 2 here, so it'll be equal to 0 0.007683. That's the answer. Okay, next one, round the following numbers to one significant figure. So the answer is not 3, it's actually 30. 4 significant figure, where's the 4 significant? It's actually at the 7 there, so it's to be 30.08. Next one, 6SF will be at the 5 here, so it will be 30.0785. Okay, can? So next one, just try it yourself, approximate the estimation. Okay, decimal places as well. So now we have to doing a bit of what? Decimal place. Let me see the previous one. Okay, so the first part we are doing, that's a, a significant view, now we do decimal places. Decimal places I think is pretty straightforward, it's like primary school. Okay, so first 1dp is actually at a 7, so it will be equals to 823.8. 2 decimal places is actually at a 6, so approximately equals to 823.77. 4 decimal places is actually at a 2, so it's 823.7683. Okay, next one, round of the following numbers to 2 decimal places. 2 decimal places, so round becomes 0. 5, 4. 3 decimal place is actually this 5, so it's 0 0.536. 5 decimal places will be at the 8, so it becomes 0 0.53598. Okay, the next one. Oh, pardon me. Sorry. Next one, round the following numbers to this one. So 1 decimal place will be approximately 3.1 4 decimal places will be at here so it is 3.0785 6 decimal places will be there 4 here so it equals to 3.0785 okay decimal places are very straightforward okay so the same thing next page will be some yep so decimal places and rounding off exercises Okay, so now for the next one, we direct need to do the estimation. When the question asks you to use the estimation, means you need to know calculators will be allowed. You need to show your all your workings. Okay, you need to show me all your workings. So let's try the first one first. Nine point eight one. So this one you approximate. Approximate. So it becomes what? This one approximate will become 10 plus square root 9 because 9 is a perfect square. So that's why I have this minus cube root of 27 minus times, sorry, pardon me, times negative 4 the whole thing square. So it'll be equals to 10 plus 3 minus 3 times 16. Okay, so it becomes 10 plus 3 is 16 minus, oh, so we must use the order operation first, I forgot it. So 10 plus 3 is 13 minus 48, which is equal to negative 35. Okay, the next one, approximation. Negative 19.8 as well as negative 20 plus bracket negative 8 plus square root 16. So approximately negative 20 minus 8 plus 4. Approximately negative 24. The next one, 15 minus cube root of 1, 2, 5 because that's a perfect cube times negative 2 the whole thing square. So it equals to 15 minus 5 times 4. Order of operation, you must do a multiplication first, minus 20, which is equal to negative 5. Okay, can? Yeah. Next few sections, same thing. We do estimation. So please remember no calculators allowed. And you can train it itself. Okay, with this, we come to the end of this chapter. So in this chapter, we learn about real numbers, integers, rational values, recurring decimals. We know how to do plus uh, addition, subtraction of positive and negative numbers, uh, multiplication and division of positive and negative numbers. We do fractions and we also do with approximation and estimation. So once you're done with all the trial question, please head on to the assignment and try to do all the questions. Okay, you can? Yeah, you will end it here. Thank you.